Okay, good. And then um, any questions or comments on the proposed agenda? Okay, then perhaps we we get get going. Um, so, Sebastian, I, I don't know if you had anything prepared for the previous meeting. You would like to um, get going directly, or is it easier to start with an overview of of, of what is the latest in the TD and, and TM uh -huh. uh, happening of, of things? Or how, how do you think it's the best way to run this? Well, um, I have some slides which gives a quick overview about why thing model and what kind of features uh, we have so far. Um, I can quickly go over the slides and after that we can uh, make discussion on relation to SDF. So we have some experience on plugfests about this. So uh, typical, we have a lot of SDF samples which are transformed to sing models or to, to a sing description. Um, um, so, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, I would my proposal to start with, with this approach. Yeah, so to give you a quick update about what's going on at W3C and then we can move on to comparison and questions and so on. Yeah. Sounds very good. So I'll, I'll let, I'll stop sharing and you can take the screen. Yeah, um, does it look good? Mm. Do I see the Maybe. title slide? Sorry? You can see the title slide. Oh. oh. What do you see now? I shared now my see your whole desktop. Full desktop. Okay, then maybe let's go this way. <laughs> I'm not going to presentation mode. Okay, well, um, right. So, um, yeah, thank you for uh, having me here and giving you the chance to give you the latest about the thing model. Um, so these are some slides which I used for my lecture. So, uh, so they are, I would say, uh, very detailful with a lot of examples. But uh, maybe uh, it's quite um, quite nice to have also a good feeling for what you can use some uh, approaches here, and uh, so that's the reason why I have so many examples here in the slides. So, um, right, uh, just to give you a quick motivation, why uh, was this now introduced also uh, in Web of Things the same model approach, and as you know. Um, <clears throat> We have different life cycle aspects of IoT equipments, and um, and starting from from designing IoT devices uh, until uh, it's installed by the customer and deployed by the customer, you have different phase which different kind of yeah I would say meta information are ever able, and as you know uh, the thing description is uh, description of uh, device that is really active. It's online accessible. Uh, you you're getting all the detailed information in the description. How to yeah to uh, get to specific uh, information from the device, and it also means you have also the metadata like um, IP address and also the security metadata, so that you know what kind of security mode you must apply to have a very successful uh, um, connection to your IT equipment. And yeah, and the situation is sometimes that you have uh, things designed, which maybe have a different setup regarding, I don't know, um, protocols or security modes and so on. And, and of course, you have sometimes also not all the information required to some specific point, like how is the IP address, which is in the future used, yeah? So as you know, the IP address typical provided in the thing description. However, um, when you buy this uh, equipment here, like in here, then your typical IP address is not uh, uh, known yet because it's then just known when it's uh, installed by the customer and you assign them IP address, right? And the question is, if there is a way how we can design already, I would say only the cap capabilities of the thing without going into the details of communication data, metadata, and, and security metadata. 
And that was, for example, one of the motivation here to have something which giving us the opportunity for doing so. Um, another uh, aspect which we like to have, and this is what, for example, also SDF having on board uh, is the opportunity to adapt uh, already existing definition or basic definition from uh, other models. Yeah, so let's let's assume we have some different kind of lamps here. Um, uh, one of them, you can change the colors and you can dim and all this stuff. And then you have basic lamps, which is providing basic information like um, the status or you have the functionality to switch on and off. And, and this is typical the basic functionality, which you always have also in, also in the smart lamps, yeah, which you have more functionality. Yeah? And the question is how you can simply adapt existing definition from some basic thing models uh, or thing definitions and adapt them to do not again the sweet definition, right? So there was the request how we can simply reuse existing knowledge and uh, capabilities uh, in new thing models. Yeah? And yeah, and the answer is that we have to find the thing model approach. Um, so maybe to, to give you just a background um, about the history. So in the 1.0 version of the thing description, we had, had already this approach uh, compiled in there. However, it was called differently. We called the thing description template at that time. However, since uh, TD 1.1, we have it called thing model because the term makes more sense than this template approach. Um, yeah, we have also more or less a formal definition uh, here. So I think this a thing model is a description for a class of things that have the uh, same capabilities, describes the properties, action events, and common metadata that are shared for entire group of things. Compared to a thing description, thing model does not contain enough information to identify or interact with a thing instance. Yeah, so especially the last sentence make very clear that the thing model is, I would say, an uncompleted thing description since typically you will not find very specific um, uh, communication metadata in there to make interaction with the thing. Yeah. Um, right, um, this is a very small example of a thing description um, from, our, from our lamp. Uh, so you find here simple the interaction affordance uh, that the lamp is providing here. So you find a property status and action toggle and uh, an event overheating. And as you can see here, there's no additional information provided about communication metadata. Yeah, so typical, we would, only, uh, we would also have forms in here to get the information, what I have to do to set up the, 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 the network interface and to make the right uh, request here for the status as example. So this is, for example, missing here and, and also not required in theme models. Yeah. The same is also true for security metadata and so on. So um, yeah, and this is a valid thing, this a thing model here. Um, just a comparison to a thing description. I like this kind of illustration here. So thing model are typical uh, a kind of stamp uh, where missing information uh, um, uh, uh, typical uh, in there. And when we want to create a valid thing description out of the thing with the model, then all the missing information have to provide it there to, uh, to the thing model to have the valid thing description here. Yeah? And this also shows a uh, thing model is also kind of, I would say, class definition of things yeah, where you can instantiate multiple thing descriptions based on the yeah, number of uh, devices you created for this specific class system. Um, right, how we do indify thing models, uh, we have introduced a new add type in the thing description, which is simple saying um, TM, so TM is the prefix, so that also means we have our own um, namespace for the thing model for it, which has covered all the uh, uh, vocabularies only addressing the thing models. So we are using this value here to identify uh, what is the thing model. And yeah, and then we have a couple of design tools um, to yeah, design um, thing models um, with 
other thing models here is with some of the uh, use case if you like to extend uh, existing thing model so let's assume we have here a basic thing model definition like this on off and then we would use the links container to say okay um, we're pointing to an existing thing model here and um, and say uh, we're simple extended that means that the instances of the uh, thing model so when it comes to the thing description will then also in have in there the property on off um, uh, in addition to this dim property here um, then we have also this reference this is actually the same approach what you have in sdf as well so you make a simple reference to to a place of a existing def definition somewhere so you simply say where's the location of this uh, document and then you're using json pointer to say please copy or clone everything what is defined somewhere else so like in here so you say you want to reuse the definition of the dim uh, um, definition here in this new property which is called dimming and uh, and what is also possible that you are able to override existing definition so that means that you simply override the maximum here and you add extend all the additional values like the unit uh, term here so you you're providing additional information here and um, we have also a kind of restriction of this overriding approach um, this is explained in this slide that you should be also careful about this overriding um, topic because um, here's the uh, request that all the instances of the new definition should be valid also to the old definition yeah so let me take this dimming property which is uh, copied from from this this example here and you see the maximum uh, is overwritten by 120 yeah so now is the danger that instances can be higher than 120 so like 110 um, this will be then valid regarding this definition however it will be not valid regarding to the to the source definition or to the to the origin definition anymore and that's the reason why it's not allowing to this in that array uh, we have also the restriction of the typing yeah so if you have override types then there is for example also the risk that you have some for example some floating values here and um, and if this is the case like uh, 20.5 then this will be not valid regarding this integer which expects some discrete values in here right um, well and this example will be um, correct so this extends this existing definition however overrides this dim approach or this dim definition however it is in the range of this source definition so that means all the um, instances that are created here out of this um, new definition here they are definitely valid to the to the source definition here um, then we have also this composition. This is uh, also a, a very um, 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 useful approach to, yeah, to say um, I like to create a new system based on on uh, existing definitions. Um, so a good example here is, for example, to say, okay, I like to design a new smart ventilation system. And the smart ventilation is based on the definition of ventilation and has also some fancy LEDs on, on that. And then you have already LED thing model uh, defined somewhere and you have also a ventilation thing model defined somewhere. And then you can express this, this composition simple by this links container. You say, okay, uh, this new system smart ventilation consists of um, this ventilation thing model and on this LED thing model and what you should also provide here is a instance name so uh, this is a, a way to give a kind of identifier of this thing model so this is 
for example, useful for doing so if you, for example, have a system which use a multiple different kind of sub models, uh, uh, multiple same uh, ventilation or same LED lamps. And then you can provide a own instance name for each uh, model uh, of the LED uh, to make a differentiation of them in the application later on. Yeah. Personally, I'm not very happy about the instance name term. Maybe uh, it's still, maybe it's getting renamed uh, in the future, but at the moment, this is the working assumption. Well, and then we have also provided a, 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 a algorithm how you can generate thing description out of this thing model approaches. Um, yeah, I don't want to jump over each step here, what you have to do there, but there are some pro replacing process needed and and then you have to replace the placeholder identifier. I will show you what this is about, actually, and so on. There are some uh, very simple uh, processing steps how to generate out of thing models uh, thing description. Um, yeah, this is an example which also shows um, we have also this TM required, um, what you also have in SDF. And um, this simple says, okay, if you have some required properties defini defined, then this should be definitely showing also show up in the thing description instance then, right? And as you can see here, this is not a valid thing description regarding this thing model, since it's expecting two interactions here, namely uh, the property status and the action toggle, and here only the status is uh, present. And here we have a valid one, and the next one is also valid because um, this is optional, this event, and this also means it can be simply also reflected by this in description. Uh, so it would be also valid to have it here. Well, and then we have the uh, placeholder concept. The placeholder concept is a um, simple uh, approach to give in the thing model some yeah, I would say some places which should be then replaced when it comes to generate uh, thing description instances. So for example, here you want to give a specific pattern of the title, then you say you can say your thermostat number da 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 da, so that has to then replaced. Also what you can of course do is to provide first information of the protocol metadata, so you can provide a scheme value here. However, you have done here to replace this um, this part with the IP address of the program that you're going to use and so on. Then you have also other places where you can provide this placeholder. And if you want to uh, generate thing description out of the thing model with the placeholder, then you should have this kind of placeholder map or um, can be any kind of a map uh, approach here. So the specification does not force to use this in a JSON format. You can do it also in a different format, but this is just an example how this can uh, look like. Um, so there's a simple lookup uh, of this identifier and it's simply replacing then the, the parts with the value that is provided in the map. So what IP address, uh, uh, the, the, the maximum value, the observable uh, situation and so on. And this is, I think, a very cool approach when it comes to mass deployment uh, that you provide a specific um, uh, batch of placeholder maps for specific um, 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 assets uh, so that you can have an individual thing description which are providing specific information. Well, and this is the last slide. Um, so we have also a tool which calls editor, which helps you also designing thing models. And it also shows nicely the dependencies of the thing models. So if you have to find some dependencies, um, like do you extend thing models or you have a composition and so on, then you can simply also to see as a nice graph here. Uh, but in general, it is a tool which um, gives you opportunity to edit your file uh, in a text form. Or if you like it more, I would say drag and drop or more in this uh, assistance style, then you can also go this uh, graphical approach here and 
this idea of seeing the script closely models if you like it. Um, well, that's the last slide. Um, yeah, now I'm open for question and discussions. <laughs> Very good. Thank, thanks a lot, Sebastian. This was, this was great. Um, first obvious question. Can we get a copy of the slides? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and I, I, it's, 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 I'm quite glad to see, you know, there's kind of good cross pollination of, of features between SDF and, and, and T, uh, TM. I think that's yeah. going to be helping us to move between those two formats. So it, it's nice yeah. to be actually designing these both at, at the same time. Good. I have a question Th about for this. forms. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you were done, Adi. Oh, yeah, go, go, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm good. Go ahead. Can a thing model have a form? Um, you showed your example without forms, but what if I wanted a form that had, like, for I think about BACnet, for example, where you have things like the, uh, you know, object ID and things like that that are fixed on the device, but you just don't have the IP address. So with BACnet, I'd want a form that would have separate properties for things like object ID and all that. When I generated a TD, I'd want to generate the URL for, for, for the backnet from that. So can I do that with thing model? Yes, yes, sure. So there is, I, I mean, uh, not this limitation on, on uh, uh, what is not allowed, I would say. Yeah. So you can, of course, also have forms in there. Um, so you can simply have this and then, uh, Press it here and remove this. And then you can say, okay, I have an entry. So you have to put the, the you have to um, indicate it with a placeholder so it gets put in the map and so it can be worked on by yeah. the tools. Parknet, and then, and then you can provide a yeah. placeholder yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I guess I'd want to point out that in SDF, we just use JSON pointers, so we don't really, but that's what you would, when you do the transform, you would, you would put placeholders in that, that map would reference the JSON pointers that are in what we call the uh, mapping file or mapping information, but it seems like that's what the equivalent in SDF would be just the use of JSON pointers. Yeah, I mean, you can do this the same here, right? You can also use the TM ref, right? And you can also um, um, copy the stuff in there, right, on this level. Yeah. So this would also work. And what was also work is that you have something like that. Um, that you say you have a placeholder on this on this level. Yeah, that you say okay here. Um, that you need some forms info. Yeah which provided by the mapping file somehow, right? Would be also possible. So you can provide as much many uh, information you like to have, or does it make sense to, 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 to be generic enough? And uh, the only thing which we say, uh, what not makes sense to provide in a thing model, this, which this goes more in this, instance specific information yeah so like the ip address or or uh, ids of something or like something like that so uh, if this is a, a more or less um, not not um, required then everything is possible right so um also that was my final uh, comment was your use of the word instance um, um mm -hmm. Even you have an instance, but it doesn't have an IP address yet. That, that's sort of my takeaway from that. So you can have instances that of thing models that don't have IP addresses, and you're still calling them instances. So that was. Um, well, the thing description is the instance, or what do you mean? Mean so. So you had a thing in your one of the slides. You had a. Thing model construct. Uh, you the composition. Them. Yeah, you mean the mm -hmm. composition. Hang on. You um, said you weren't happy with it, but <laughs> yeah, this is the composition uh, thing here that you uh, you have a six uh, existing things, yeah, like uh, lamps and uh, engine. I don't know, and you want to create out of them a new system, right? Yeah, you're calling yeah. that an instance, but yet you could still generate a number of different TDs, differentiated TDs from those instances. 
They could have different IP addresses and they can have different. Exactly. Yeah. So um, that, that's the question if the instance name is taken over, I don't know, in the in the uh, title of the thing description, I don't know. It's well, not we are, no, uh, the context is we're having a, currently having a discussion in the SDF about what's an instance. And, and so this seems to be um, another example of people using the word instance to describe something that isn't really um, network accessible yet. Um, yeah. I don't want to get too deep into that discussion, but I wanted to um, kind of plant a flag there. So you would like prefer to have a URL and identifier? No, yeah. no. Oh, I see. It, okay. It has to do with how we use the word instance. Yeah, so yeah. Wanna, also yeah, not yeah. happening. So maybe so, the so I don't world. say that we only use instance when we have a URL. I'm just saying that the, the, it's very confusing to use the word instance. I don't want to try to define it here, but mm. but there is that is what you said is kind of the. Part of the question is, should we only use the word instance when it's something that has a URL and can be accessed on a network? And I'm not sure about that, but that's, that's our, that's our discussion. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't trying to make a conclusion though. Yeah. 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 Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm done. If, uh, Indeed. Yeah, I think like, indeed, I mean, like some of the, the terminology can be a very challenging topic and I think it's going to be. Useful to have also some kind of alignment across organizations here. So yeah, so it, uh, that, that discussion. I don't know how you name this. You have just name, right? Or you? I don't know what do or do well, you we have, can a... have a definition that uses another definition, and then we can we can have what I've been calling successive refinement, or you can have several layers. I can define what what a backnet object is, and then I can define an, an analog input object. And then I can define a, 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 a temperature measurement that's an analog input. And all three of those can be defined by saying more about adding more constraints like units and things like that. My first one doesn't have any units. The second, you know, I only add units at the third stage. I only add number constraints at the second stage. And none of those are instances yet, really. Or you could say that each one is an instance of the previous definition. So. We don't really see the bright line between class and instance, or some of us don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. So, so Sebastian, what, what do you think are the uh, main features you will be developing going further here? Or do you think now you have the set you need for the, for your use cases of the, of the thing model? So the composition is the very newest one there. This, this was a request from Bosch to have this. So um, so they would they had a lot of a lot of use cases, and I see also this uh, a lot of potential of uh, of use cases or scenarios. Um, so the composition is very the last one, and at the moment um, we don't have further feature requests. So at the moment, I would say it's kind of stable. And um, so, um, yeah, I would say um, it's now put in the 1.1 version of the thing description. Maybe what is also makes sense to say here, we will maybe in a new charter move the section what we have as a thing model uh, move to our own specification document because uh, I think it makes sense to to consider the thing model more separately from the thing description and not being a part of the thing description itself uh, because it's getting more and more intention uh, to work with the thing model approach since it's quite interesting um, uh, from the life cycle aspect. Uh, to, to, to have something at the designing approach, which can be used from the very beginning and, and, and the part, uh, how to generate thing description or thing models, then yeah, uh, another aspect to, to be considered. Yeah. But at the moment, I would say, yeah, it's to call, uh, to, to, to test the thing model approach as it is to provide comments. So we have still time, uh, until March for going the candidate recommendation. So we have still time to, 
yeah, to to modify or optimize uh, approaches. What you what I have shown here, but uh, at the moment, uh, from the point of view of features, uh, I would say um, it's everything is covered now. Yeah. Or do you miss something? <laughs> And not 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 so much. I was wondering, like like if we, for example, uh, would build more codes to go on between STF and and TD. Is is now is the moment? Uh, sorry, between STF and TM, it's like now is the moment to look at the spec and see like how how features map. Are we missing something? Should something maybe be that's made easier? Uh, I guess what you're saying that now it is stable uh, spec. Yeah, I mean we have this transformation code. I mean uh, also in the testing folder we have a plenty of samples. Uh, of um, uh, SDF and uh, thing model. Um, for example, uh, Jan has a couple of provided. Where is it? Oh, ah, this is not the latest one. Yes. Hmm. So this are, for example, thing models that I used uh, one of them in the last um, um, test fest. And um, here's this converter tool, which we used, or which I used that time. So a student of mine have developed it as a tool to transform SDF um, uh, definitions to thing models, right? And um, and then here I provided some examples here how this can look like. Yeah, so I used here this light router and then light control. Um, example and so on i don't know if if it makes sense to have a look in each of them or yeah no i guess we don't have time to look in the data but, but thanks a lot for the for the update and um actually a a, a colleague of mine made a, a bit of a demo where also integrates your i think it's, it's your tool uh with the other translator tools so we can go with from sdf to all the other ecosystems and, and back um so i think we are that sounds that sounds sounds very good so like now is the right time to look at also the details of like what what, what are we potentially missing there i mean yeah i have a little bit of have a close look. with uh, sdf where i i made a an extension to sdf that um that uses thing uh, description and thing model elements like data schemas and forms. And so basically in the workflow, you can say what elements of data schema you want to bind to a thing uh, using a mapping file and also what form you can bind to a, a, an SDF definition. And then when you generate the uh, thing model or thing description, it, it uses that information as uh, as hints or as, as guidance in the construction. So I'd, I'd like to stay in sync with it in terms of the tool flow also. Mm -hmm. We have proposed extensions for SDF as a, the mechanism for how you do that, but also the content um, in terms of being able to use vocabulary from uh, thing description or like, for example, I use the Modbus vocabulary mm -hmm. <clears throat> to generate the thing description from the, it, it has to come from somewhere. And in one workflow, envisioned workflow, it comes uh, from the SDF file as an extension. Okay, v very good. I mean, now looking at the time, it's been super interesting. I think we only have a bit more than 15 minutes till the end of the session. So I think, Sebastian, we, we definitely need to catch up uh, later later again on, on more of this. Um, sure, yeah. And I think and in, in particular, one, one part that we didn't have a uh, no chance to discuss is this, uh, how do we go from uh, SDF into 
yeah, I, I hate to use the word instance, but you know, something like you would con <laughs> use a TD to describe of. Um, and I guess if, if you go for a TD, then maybe SDF into TM and then TM into uh, TD uh, might be the right approach. Um, then the question is like, where, where do we get that extra piece of information? And um, like the IP addresses and, and, and such. And now we've been discussing whether it, it, it's a mapping file or, or something else. And I think like using what you guys have learned here on going to, between TM and TD probably makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we should have a look at that together someday. Yeah, sure, yeah. Um... I mean, um, as I mentioned, I'm uh, still still everything is quite open uh, in in terms of definition, and maybe it it's not very practical to have it that way. Um, and uh, yeah, I would be happy to to uh, close exchange with you. Uh, and uh, it would be very cool that we are uh, definitely uh, look that SDF and Thing Model are working very smoothly together. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. that uh, there there should be not a conflict in in from the design uh, point of view. So, uh, however, um, um, the, the 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 student uh, which I asked to make this tool and he make also this comparison and and it ceases and there was actually not really a blocking point uh, in anything uh, that uh, seems to not uh, to work to each other. So everything should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything what you define as the F should be also reflect able in the thing model and vice versa. Yeah, I mean, unless uh, something is new defined in SDF, so maybe I'm not ever aware of, of all the new feature what you have maybe designed in a couple of weeks or months, um, then maybe we need a new look on this. But um, my experience is, and I don't know, Michael, uh, you also had also also always a look on this. Uh, I have not a feeling there is some contradictionary uh, contradiction or some problematic definitions somewhere, which maybe uh, will result some problems when when you like to convert from one format to another. No, there, there. I don't. I don't think there are any any showstoppers that there were probably some things that um you know that we'd like to align like uh read only for readable and this sort of thing uh and also you know to to really nail the structure part because what it's all about composition i don't have any, really any use for anything that does isn't composed that's just a, there's the basic elements but they have to get composed before you can really use them in a system so um i think those that's really where we need to focus on the how we build systems and how the workflow um, works when we build systems. But yeah, I agree with you. There's no, there's no main showstopper. It's just, it's just um, um, there are just different ways of doing a few different ways to do things, and we need to sort of figure out what's you know whether it matters and where it matters. Pick pick a good way. And um, maybe one thing which. Um... When you mention how to generate thing description, I mean one thing which I have not explained to you is um, how to generate thing description out of a composition uh, definition. And in the TD spec, there are two approaches provided for doing so. One approach is that you keep the structure as it is, so so you have for each thing model uh, um, then. Uh, especially the, the thing description representation of that. So here we have the smart ventilation again, uh, and then we have the model for the ventilation TM and the LED TM. And when it comes to generate thing description, so if you do it only for one for one device, then you have one thing description for you have for the top level uh, thing model. Yeah, then you have the thing description of this sub uh, system, the the ventilation, and then you have the TD for the uh, LED. Uh, subsystem and all of them they are linked to each other right so you can have a look in the links container and then you can see where i'm coming from or where i'm related to yeah everything is defined in the links container um there's also another approach is to this uh, what i call self-contained thing description where you have all the information provided in a single thing description and 
there can be, however, the risk um, the, of name collision or uh, name clashes. And to avoiding this, um, I using simple then the, the instance name that we have provided um, in the links container of the composition as a kind of prefix um, of um, of the of the properties which coming from the subsystem, right? So these are the property from the ventilation, and and then we have these actions uh, from the LED. And we're using simple the, the instance name as a kind of prefix and underscore. Yeah. So this was one approach or one idea how we can also define a single thing description on a composed uh, definition. Yeah. So this is the instance name, and this is then used as a, a prefix when it when you like to have the thing description in the in, in the single file, right? So my takeaway is still that we we have a lot of different ways of doing things, and it looks like what that you're looking at a few different ways too. I don't know if we're looking to kind of settle on a best practice or to allow a bunch of different ways depending on the use case. Any anyway, that's kind of where the discussion mm. has to go. Yeah. Okay, I will stop sharing. Okay, very good. Thanks a lot, Sebastian. That was a good update and good, good discussion. I think we have a good way forward here to explore the synergies and, and opportunities there together. Mm -hmm. Good. So then, if there's no more final questions or comments there, let me spend um, the remaining five to ten minutes on the on the last um, topic, the connecting IPSA devices to DTDL applications hacking. So yeah, so here the idea was to uh, t take the challenge that we discussed with the with the DDDL team and actually get some practical hacking uh, on providing the, the devices described with STF, for example, an IPSO device into the DDDL platform via the transformation that we can do enabled by by STF. And um, and here we would need to do a a bit, a bit of planning, perhaps, to, to kick off our hacking hacking activity. And I, let's we could either have a specific hackathon day on it, or, or we could do some work work offline and, and gather later on. But maybe the first things would be to document a little uh, what do we want want to achieve here. Um, so maybe Kars, Karsten, you were actually the one who proposed this grand challenge. <laughs> Originally, do you want to say a few words of, of introduction? Um, what what do you had in mind here? <clears throat> yeah, basically the idea was that we take an existing um, SDF model, and um, if so, is probably a, a good one because we have lots of experience with the the underlying uh, uh, mechanisms, and uh, build an actual uh dtda based instance of that in in the uh asia system so we we are not just doing some theoretically valid translation but we actually go ahead and <clears throat> build something that that can be put into the the uh, microsoft implementation and then we make sure that uh, the the operations you might be able to do um original IPSO instances are possible in some form on the uh, Asia DTDL instances. And uh, well, of course, the, the uh, top achievement would be to do this completely automatically. Uh, so you, you actually can look like an IPSO instance uh, through a converter that talks to the DTDL uh, instance. And that's of course just just one concrete form of uh, doing what uh, uh, we we want to do in the uh, semantic uh, converter um, uh, approach. Uh, but given that we we have some some specific uh, proposal for help from Microsoft for setting up an actual instance, I think that would be an interesting um, approach to pursue.
Okay, thanks, Karsten. Um, any questions, comments here before we go on the practical uh, way, way forward? Questions are about the way forward. <laughs> like, <laughs> use real devices, that kind of thing. So yeah, let's go ahead and keep going. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, that's 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 a very good point. Probably, I would um, start the e easy way around. Use something like the you know the uh, Eclipse slash on uh, demo live with them to some client that you know works out of the box, and and you you can have um <clears throat> you can have a few simulated sensors uh, exposed. Um, and then, and then perhaps, um, put that on, on, on the lesson, uh, live with the management server and, and through the management server APIs, uh, you would e expose these, um, using SDF semantics and, and then you bring the SDF models to the, um, so you convert the SDF models to DDDL and then from DDDL provide a, a, a binding towards the lesson APIs. And you would then need to build on top of, of course, on top of Lesion something that understands the SDF semantics, but that should be uh, pretty much the same content as we have in the mapping files uh, for the uh, IPSO models. So, well, probably the next step would be building these boxes, <laughs> how I just explained, and, and make, make it perhaps a bit more clear. But that's something what I had initially in mind. So it sounds like the architecture that we that we're envisioning is very similar to the architecture that we've been talking about when we were talking about the OCF to lightweight MTM stuff that the semantic um, bridge translator converter. It seems like a similar architecture. You you yes. have, have to create a model bridge and then uh, have a binding. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And that's a, that's a good point because we what we did discuss uh, back in the days if we should use the um, what is the web of things DD uh, implementation the yeah uh, yeah what do you call it? maybe could even be thing web um, um, thing web yes <laughs> node, node what could even be a component maybe yeah. um, depending on how it goes and what kind of things you're interfacing to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because thing, yeah, thing web has a lot, lot of these um, bindings already implemented, and and if we can generate TDs out of um, out, out of these model, all of these models, then we should be able to generate enough information for the thing web implementation to actually so, do so its So you could at least say here, here, um, you know, lightweight M to M is sort of eas easier because you have this other sort of direct path of doing it, or maybe not, but but also that. If you had a I had to adapt to a lot of different protocols, this is easily usable. This this node watt engine is easily usable to a BACnet and Modbus and MQTT and whatever. Indeed. <clears throat> and I think it was when we well, maybe maybe the next step, well, the first steps would be to set up a bit of an infrastructure um, from from our side that we can point to with the with the with the DDDL uh, models, and then um, they have a have a chat with the, with the Brian and and his team on like where 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 do we what is the easiest ways from from the DDDL or or my, my, or Azure Digital Twins infrastructure to communicate. Um, and whether would it would make sense to have the, the node what there in between, you know, node what could provide the HTTP APIs, um, or whether it's go to directly from there to the Lesion uh, management server APIs. And in particular, it would be the, at the same time interesting to think about the how we can go between all three, you know, IPSO, DDL, and, and OCF, because uh, that's maybe could be guiding our architecture, our decisions here. Uh, to think about three ecosystems at, at, at once. But yeah, this is just we a, have a slide that it, describes it, the architecture and things like that. Do you have a, like any, maybe mm -hmm. the, the next step might be to create some, I mean, trivial step, but create some, you know, like write down what we're just talking about. Indeed, indeed. And actually, maybe uh, Sebastian, do you, do you happen to know on, on the note what has there been any development uh, on the Lightweight M2M side? So I don't know if it has a co-op 
uh, implementation or from the beginning, but has anyone experiment like with M2M? Um, I think there should be no problem to use it directly. I think there is uh, only this um, situation that um, that you always get the full payload on the application side. So if you um, requesting a property, then um, the lightweight MDM has their own uh, predefined payload structure, right? And and this is a full pass to the application. Um, so which I think it's not very nice, but it would work. Yeah. So then you have to work on the. Um, that's where I, I have worked on um, what I was calling a semantic API, but what it actually is, is a way of, of extracting things from the payload based on um, a, an annotated JSON schema mm -hmm. that has JSON path pointers into it. And so that was like halfway to being able to, to do the semantic. So what you're saying is Node-Watt currently does the protocol translation, but we would have to build the semantic translation layer on top of that, the pay, at least the payload translation. Exactly. So this is, yeah. this is not, 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 uh, yeah, because it's very specific, right? And not what should be more independent of specific ecosystems or specific mm. uh, IoT uh, well, systems. But then again, as part of DD 2.0 investigative work to look at whether there should be a separation from the abstract data um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a concrete data schema. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, what we are quite often have this discussion. I think we have to work on this in the TD 2.0. So to have a nice solution for, for this discussion. Um, okay. Unfortunately, I have we to only go... have the abstract. Yep. <laughs> yeah, uh, unfortunately, I have to go to the next meeting. Um, yeah, it was fun. I will send you the, the, the slide and yeah, then let's see us in one of the next meetings, right? But, but very good. Thanks a lot, Sebastian. Definitely let's continue the discussions later. Yeah. Thanks a lot for joining today. You thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Okay. Yeah, indeed we are over time. So I guess we had, this is a good time to conclude also or for the rest of us. But um and, and let's see. I guess we're gonna have a another uh session on, on the on this topic. Um let's let's see if we if we manage to have one before the Christmas vacations. Um but then we have a good time to hack over our Christmas vacations and then <laughs> get full back to full speed in, in January. Okay, but let's take the uh, over over email and 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 I and Telegram the planning for the for the next session. Good. Any more questions, comments before we close for today? A reminder about um, one DM meeting later today and our design team meeting on Wednesday. Yeah, yes. I will be late as always. <clears throat> um, I hope I can get rid of this regular Yang Siba thing soon, but right now it's <laughs> conflicting. Yeah. yeah, and we're we're going ahead with maintaining the schedule anyway, even though we we don't, you know, we're not like fully in 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 deep with the review board yet. <laughs> okay, talk to you later. Alrighty. Talk to you in one hour. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.